Welcome to this uh, new course in this series that I've been uploading on this YouTube channel. And uh, this time I'm going to present you a, a course on density functional theory, which is a theory that has been used very broadly in material science, in physics, quantum matter physics, and in chemistry as well. Um, I'm going to provide you from the uh, f foundational uh, information about density functional theory. The goal here is not to show you how to use a code or to, or to use a software. There are plenty of other resources for this. Uh, the goal really is for you to understand what is behind the hood when we actually do density functional theory and also convince you that it's actually a good way to solve the Schrodinger equation and also understanding the limitations. So that basically is going to make you a better scientist or a better engineer uh, using density functional theory. And I hope through this series of about uh, 10 to 15 lectures, uh, you will be able to get the information you need. So the goal here will be on trying to develop an intuition and also uh, some formalism as needed. So the first lecture that I'm going to talk about is housekeeping. This is going to be a short lecture. And in fact, I'm going to try to keep the lecture a little bit shorter than I usually do on this channel, um, because I know that the, uh, the listeners have been telling me that it's easier for, for, more short, for shorter uh, uh, presentation. So first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about housekeeping. So what density functional theory does, uh, and of course here you probably recognize one of the images that can be uh, generated by one of our favorite generative AI, uh, basically, density functional theory calculates uh, density of states, density of electrons, and observables from that. So observable are all those properties that we can measure. So what I want to do in this, uh, in this course is to realize that it's a complicated problem, and yet show you that by building from the ground up, so from first principle, we can learn step by step uh, to get to the point where we actually uh, uh, understand what we are doing. So it's maybe, uh, I hope that you are going to stay with me on this journey to understand uh, density functional theory, and we are going to climb the, the stairs together. And I want to tell you that I personally have been working on density functional theory for, uh, I would say at this point, almost pretty much 27 years. So starting uh, early on with computers that were not super fast, to now computers that are almost too fast in the sense that they produce data faster than we can actually understand them. Uh, but uh, at this point, I think it's important to take a, a look back and understand the, fund the foundational um, information that we need about DFT. Uh, so uh, the path to success can be a long climb, but sometimes you have to come back to the same place and really try to hammer and hammer information in so, until it's, uh, it becomes really uh, natural. So you will see my the teaching style for those who have followed other courses on this YouTube channel is that I repeat a lot of things, trying to repeat them in different ways uh, so that a student can actually uh, uh, get the best out of it. So the syllabus for this, it's also a course that I've been teaching a number of times. This time around, I'm teaching it as a, as a graduate elective at a, at a uh, at Penn State, uh, the, the syllabus will be as follows. I will talk about the many body problem. We'll talk about functionals that will be a separate screencast that I will create next. Uh, there will be talk about the wave function theory. And then from there, we'll talk about density functional theory, look about the theorems, how we solve it, some properties we can get, uh, how we do the approximation, and finally, I talk about uh, to the potential. So there will be some exercise at the end that I will show just to get you started. But again, the objective here is not to provide you an in-depth, uh, 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 hands-on uh, experience on DFT. Again, there are plenty of excellent tutorials out there that have been developed by the top groups. I will provide you some links to that when we get to that point. Uh, I am not trying to substitute uh, myself to those people who have been doing those tutorials, which are uh, way beyond what I can, what can I ever can produce. So here I will really, uh, really focus on the, 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 the theoretical part of things. So for those who are taking the course with me, I, very quickly, 
uh, the grades, there will be no ex no exam. Uh, there will be a quiz every week. Uh, I'm going to make a copy to the quiz here on the YouTube channel so that for those who, who want to check uh, what they're doing, uh, they are welcome to do that. The quiz will be 50% of the grade. Uh, hopefully, by the time people are done with this course, they'll be able to do a, a project. Uh, I mean, a full project and even write a short paper out of it. That's my objective. Uh, and the project, of course, is the idea is to show uh, use uh, DFT. Uh, so there will be about 14, I mean, 10 to 14. It's going to depend a little bit lectures. Uh, the, the live lecture will be about 90 minutes, uh, but the screencast will be usually shorter. I would expect about at most one hour, which I will cut in uh, in two parts, probably two, twice to half an hour or something like that. So you should know also that much, a uh, lot of reading material out there and uh, uh, many books, actually, uh, back when I was learning, uh, there was no books on DFT aside from the foundational one, which I, uh, foundational one that showed many articles, many reviews, many documents are available online. And also, of course, these slides will be available. So examples of books, frankly, uh, the list is so long. Um, notice the DFT for molecule, the par and yang, one of the last one on the list, which was historical one. It's been there for maybe one of the oldest one. Uh, along with uh, other other books that you have there, uh, where students like to start, uh, which is at the level of up, upper undergraduate, uh, is density functional theory by Scholl and Steckel. It's it's a good place to start. Uh, personally, I have uh, I really like the uh, Giustano's book uh, on, on here, the blue cover. Uh, this this is a good book to to actually get a lot of understanding and also the practice. Uh, many people who are top people in their field have been writing reviews and tutorial and some of them really uh, gold nuggets. I mean, I really strongly recommend that you do that. Of course, there are the foundational papers uh, that came for that basically define DFT. And the first one, obviously, is this one uh, is the Hornbrook and Cohn uh, paper, which is basically the foundational paper on density functional theory. And um, it was published in 1964. And this is actually a, a, a copy, or, or actually a, a snapshot of the paper as it was published in 1964. <laughs> as I was preparing these lectures, I realized there was a typo in the date uh, for, this, for this paper. That's, so I don't know when it was published. It was published in the months that, uh, that we don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, so Walter Cohn was really the person who started all the DFT uh, stuff and um, uh, and he was actually he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in fact uh, for this development. Um, it's uh, uh, another thing, another paper also by Walter Cohn, but with Sham and Cohn Sham uh, words that I'm going to reuse again in this course, uh, basically providing a way, a practical way to solve for DFT for DFT. So that was that was very important. Came about a month, a, a year after. Uh, the, the the previous Hornberg code. We are going to demo, to to, make, to provide the proof of the Hornberg code theorem. We are going to study the Cohn-Sham approach as well. Uh, this is going to be the foundational uh, piece of of this uh, lecture. Uh, I'd like to tell you though, and it's in, even though this course is not a historical course, you have to realize that nothing happens in vacuum. Unfortunately, uh, sometimes we are we have a little bit of a tunnel vision when it comes to science, and we come up with big names, and those big names are, are rightfully big names, no problem with that. But nothing happens in vacuum. Uh, you know, uh, there were already proposals working uh, using density as the as as a function that matters uh, in quantum mechanics for those materials. Uh, there were studies before. It didn't come just with that paper in 1964. Of course, the paper in 1964 established the foundational uh, formal uh, reason why we could use a density. But this, is, this didn't come in vacuum. Usually in science, this is actually a progression that comes to a point. It is not just one day somebody wake up and get an apple on the head and say, I found gravita gravity, just like Newton. Obviously, this is not helping uh, when we are using these metaphors because, unfortunately, um, very often the general public take them too literally. Uh, no, Newton did not discover gravity, gravity by having an apple fall on his head. 
nor Archimedes was not taking a bath when he found Eureka about, uh, about uh, buoyancy, things like that. That did not happen. This is not the way science works. But anyways, it makes for nice headlines. Uh, and uh, usually scientists uh, understand the difference between the metaphor and reality. But it's always good to remind that. Okay, let's move on. Uh, I've used, uh, I've, I've been developing this course for a number of years. Uh, and I mostly use uh, papers and tutorial, which I, which I use here, they are listed here. Uh, the more advanced papers are here in blue. Uh, in fact, the one from Engel and Dreisler is, is pretty advanced. I, I recommend that for people who like more the formalism and, and, and in-depth in formalism. I really love the material that uh, Kieran Burke pro provides uh, online. This is here, this is an older version, 2007. I'm sure there is a new version, new, newer version. Uh, the piece on the functional will be mostly uh, motivated by that. And then um, I have found over with my experience that usually people who follow a course like this should be able to read the paper on 14 easy lessons in density functional theory by frankly one of the one of the, the, the godfather of DFT, which is uh, who is John Purdue. I'll discuss that later. So one thing that's interesting as well is why is DFT so so uh, important? Well, I'm going to explain to you why it's so important over the, the, the duration of this course. But this is here, this, this plot here shows the number of papers that have been published using density functional theory over the years. And uh, you can see, uh, well, it ends about 2020, but it keeps growing. It's an exponential growth. Um, and you can see that it was barely growing in even, it was barely there in the 80s, in the mid 80s. Remember that the paper, the initial paper was in the 60s. So the reason why it took such a long time to, to grow, uh, there are a number of reasons. One reason is even though it's a tractable method uh, on the computer, uh, computer in the 80s were still a little bit too slow, or at least not enough memory to really do any useful calculation. Uh, so remember the time where you can just use a few electrons in your system. That's, a, that's one reason. So really the, the popularity has increased with the size of the computer. Now you can do fairly sizable calculation on your laptop. You know, if you're an eight core laptop with, with some decent memory, you can actually do decent calculation. At the same time, supercomputers have also developed and people have developed code that go on the supercomputer. So that's all nice. There is another reason, and I will come to that also in, during this course, is that uh, for the longest time, uh, chemists did not believe, quote unquote, in DFT. For them, DFT was not a first principle method that was not quantum chemistry. And uh, compared to Hartree-Fock, other methods like this. So for the longest reason, they did not believe so much in the accuracy of DFT uh, for maybe good reasons, because the initial approximation did not work so well with for molecule. But it turns out that many people have worked on developing functionals and developing approximation, and you will understand what functionals are as we, as we move along this course. And uh, chemists started to adopt DFT as well. And as a result, after condensed matter physicists, uh, chemists, also material scientists have done that. And even now we even have chemical engineering using, have been using it for decades, uh, electrical engineering as well. So it's becoming more and more popular. My problem with all this popularity is that many people use DFT as a black box. Um, so they just put in some numbers uh, and then just get something and reach conclusion that are not justifiable by the theory. So hopefully the, the 15, 20 hours that you would use listening to this will allow you to avoid that pitfall. So this is, uh, this is the introduction. This is how we are going to do this. And uh, thank you for staying this long. Uh, my, the next lecture will be an overview of what we are going to do. Thank you.